Hello and welcome back. In this video, we uh, well in the last video, we what we did was the pre-flight, the interior and exterior inspection. And what we're going to do now, we're going to do the engine startup and run up. The weather obviously hasn't changed because, well, you know. So we've already done the um, the exterior inspection. We've locked the doors because it's very cold outside. It's five degrees. Now we're going to do the the checklist. And upon entering cabin, pre-flight is complete. Passengers, well we have no passengers but you know I guess I'll brief you guys. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, what we're gonna we're gonna be flying to to uh to Greenland. It's gonna be four and a half hours. We're gonna be cruising at twelve thousand feet. Um Yeah, so have fun. Seatbelts shoulder shoulder harnesses are on, flaps I'll retract the flaps. Make sure that they both come up. The radios. Um, the radios here are off. The avionics master is off. Circuit breakers. We're going to check the circuit breakers that they are in. That's what out looks like. So these two are in. And for these underneath here, that's what out looks like. So all these circuit breakers here are in so those are checked all the electrical switches all these switches down here light switches fuel pumps speed out heats those are all off autopilot master switch is off um, rotating beacon that goes on the car heat is off in is off so that's checked Fuel selectors, well, for taxi, we're going to use the tip tanks, but for takeoff, we're going to use the main tanks. So they're on the tip tanks for now. Um, the gear switch, we'll move that down. Next, we move on to the engine starting checklist. It's a little bit misty here, but we'll, uh, we'll deal with that. Throttle cracked just move it in just a little bit in there mixture now this is a um, one difference with a carburetor uh, engine versus a fuel injected engine is fuel injected you start with the mixture lean and you start the engine and once the engine starts to kick over then you advance the mixture um, and then the engine runs in a carburetor you start the mixture full and the difference between that or is because in a fuel injected if you start with it rich you could flood the engine because as long as the engine turns over the fuel injectors are firing so if the engine turns over fuel is being sprayed it's, it hasn't uh, it's, there's no ignition yet you'll stand a chance of flooding the engine whereas a carburetor the carburetor automatically does its magic and you know everything works out fine Um, so the mixture is rich, the prop goes full, master switch goes on, and we check the gear lights it is green, indicating that the gear is down and locked, so it's safe. The fuel pump, we switch the fuel pump on, and we check that the fuel pressure comes up, and the fuel pump sounds like it's operating normally. It hasn't passed red markets within the green, so it's good. So the fuel pump goes back off. Engine, now the engine priming, now that depends on uh, what state the aircraft is in. If you just finished a flight like maybe 30 minutes or an hour ago, then you probably only need one to two shots of primer. But this aircraft has been sitting here in Keflavik for a few days on the last trip from Dublin. It's very cold. Um, so we probably need up to five shots of primer. If it was warm, we'd probably go with three shots, but it's pretty cold now, so we'll we'll take five shots of primer. And 
we lock it and it's very important to lock the primer because um, if it is unlocked it could creep out well from vibration of the engine running it, it could creep out and that would I think it would cause some kind of uh, suction it would it would starve the engine of fuel or cause the engine to sputter so it's important to ensure that it's locked so it doesn't creep out the mags go to both and the starter we engage the starter and there we go it started pretty easy immediately we check for the oil pressure to rise yes if the oil pressure doesn't rise within 30 seconds then we have to shut down the engine and inspect it the engine is very cold right now so we have to idle it below 1000 rpm and we lean the mixture to avoid fouling the plugs so oil pressures check a meter is above zero which means that it's charging so it's the alternator is operating normally the mixture yeah we leaned that already and then the avionics master goes on now here I have installed the Garmin the GTN 750 by Flight One it's it's a remarkable piece of unit um, I really do like it a lot so what well, you'll see it you see it uh, see me using it so the avionics master goes on I just realized in the passenger briefing I should have yeah, it's a touch screen display too so it, it's really nice I should have uh, done the departure briefing which I realized I didn't do Anyways, system test okay. Let me just get my headset on. Yep. So before we move on to the taxi checks and while we wait for the engine to warm up here, let's go ahead and put in our flight plan. So we go here to flight plan, we're at Keflavik. We go to menu and no, it's not menu. We click on uh, Keflavik and we go load procedures. The departure we're using is the the departure we're using is the um, what is it? The Gimli One Bravo departure. So we s I thought you could scroll down that way. So we look for the Gimli One Bravo, which we have there. Uh, we're going to depart. What is the wind again? The wind was from the east. It's east now. It's seven knots. Um, okay. So it's from the east at seven knots. So that means we're going to take off from runway one one. Okay. Load departure and we're going to input the route after Gimli we're going to direct um, 65 north north 65 west uh, 30 west I wonder if it will no it won't accept that format I won't accept that format Okay, what we'll have to do, we'll have to add a waypoint and go to... No, wait. We go to Gimli. Insert after. That's the same thing. Let's try that. So it's going to be... North six five zero zero point zero. Now there's a way to enter um, custom waypoints here. Let me see. Um, I 
let's just clear this message here. There is a way to enter custom waypoints. Is it menu? Let's see. No, that's not it. It's under flight plan, I think. No, that's not that. Anyways, I can't remember how to enter custom waypoints right now, so we're gonna enter. Let's see if it will take six five three zero. West. No matches found. Oh no, it would be six three three zero north. Okay. Okay, I get it now. Okay. All right. So it's going to be we're going to create a waypoint. It's going to be called North six five West zero three zero. Well, let's put West three zero. Three zero. Come on, where's the three? Three zero. But enter, create a custom, let's make it a temporary point. Um, that's the ident. It's going to be a lat long. And the lat long is gonna be in north six five zero zero point zero zero. West um, zero three zero 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 point zero zero, and we enter. We click create. Next uh, waypoint we're going to is Delta Alpha, which is I'm using PFPX here, by the way, to plan my flight. So that is. Kulusuk is an NDB located in on the coast of Greenland. So that is Delta Alpha. Duplicates found. Let's see. Yep, we have an NDB symbol here. Let's enter that. It's Kulusuk, that one. And then after that, we go. We add a waypoint. No, we go load airway, and we're taking the whiskey five seven to Narsarswak NDB. We click load, and that's that. And the destination is Bravo Golf Bravo Whiskey. And that's it. We'll load the arrival procedure once we're closer to the destination, but that will work for now. So we have here on the uh, map, okay? Okay, so the engine should be up to temperature now. Yes, I'm just going to do a quick departure briefing. We're going to depart to the east to runway off runway 11. It's going to climb according to noise abatement procedure within Keflavik 5 DME turn left. So we need DME, so we'll turn on the nav 2. Keflavik VOR is 112.0. And we switch that to uh, distance. Yes, we are getting a DME. We're supposed to ident it to make sure that we are hearing it. So while we wait for that ident to come up, noise abatement procedure. Well, noise abatement doesn't apply to us anyway, so. Well, yeah, we are IFR, so maybe it would apply to us. Anyways, it doesn't matter. We're not going to do it. But what is going to happen is we're going to make climb out and make a VMC turn either to the left or to the right. And we'll intercept the 309 degree radial. So we need to set this from GPS to VR and set the nav frequency to 1 1 
on 2.0. And hit transfer. And I see the needle swing, but we're not hearing an ident for some reason. Anyways, so we'll move on. So the engine is warmed up. So it's gonna be we're gonna take off and make a turn to intercept the 309 radial from Three zero nine is about yeah three oh eight three oh nine. Okay. And we're gonna fly that to to Gimli. Once we're established on the radial and outbound, I'll just fly the GPS anyway, so that is that. So we're gonna move on now to the taxi checklist. We're parked here somewhere on the north side of the field, north of runway two nine and one one. I think we're at spot 55. I am using scenery. All links of everything I'm using I will put in the description box below. But Anyways, uh, the wind was from the east, so we'd like to turn the aircraft into the east, into the wind. So the aircraft moves forward, we'll check the brakes. Brakes works fine. to advance the mixture a little bit because the engine is running rough. So we're going to turn the aircraft into the wind before we do the run-up. So for the taxi checklist, the radios are on, the transponder, well we'll wait for the transponder. We're not ready for that yet. Oh, we've gone too far. Um, I'll, I'll do that shortly. but So we usually taxi to a spot on the aircraft on the airport where we can do a run up. I think the wind is 100 degrees, so we should be facing the wind now. Engine is warm, so we can go ahead and idle at 1000 RPM. We'll set the parking brake. So for the taxi checklist, um, the checklist doesn't say this, but I'm going to use my, uh, my uh, Cessna training and do this part of the run up. And what we do here, we check the ailerons, that the movement is correct, the, you know, they, they move in the correct position. Um, I have heard of uh, accidents that have occurred because of maintenance, mixed up linkages and when you move the aileron to the right, you know, the uh, when you move the, con the control wheel to the right, the ailerons would command like a left bank. So they move in the correct direction. The rudder, you can't see the rudder from here, can we? No. So we just make sure that the rudder pedals move and they're, they're fine. And the elevator, we can see the elevator, so we check that. And usually we just kind of move the trim tab to make sure that it moves, but the trim wheel here moves really slow, so I'm not going to wait for that. It moves and the indicator moves, so it's fine. Next, we check the flight instruments. This is how I like to do it. The airspeed indicator is showing zero. The ADI is showing level and we adjust this is if necessary. The altimeter, the QNH right now. Sorry, I'm just turning my head to look at my other computer to get the weather information. The altimeter setting right now is 1012. We're obviously using inches here, so I'd have to use a chart to convert it, but I'll just use my tool tips. So it's 1012 millibars. Another trick is to also set it to the the airport elevation and that would be roughly the correct QNH to have. Okay, and uh, next we check the turn coordinator. The wing uh, the wings are level and the ball is centered. There is fluid in there. It doesn't show any leaks or anything. Uh, we also, I forgot to check the compass, you usually just run your hand around the compass to make sure that the oil isn't leaking out or anything and it... We usually park on a compass rose so we so we know if the um, a compass rose on the airport which is supposed to show where true north is or magnetic, not true north but magnetic north and you're supposed to compare that reading with a compass. Next we, uh, the HS, uh, HSI, the compass is showing one zero zero degrees so we check this to make sure it's, it's also showing one zero zero degrees so that's fine 
and the vertical speed indicator is showing zero it's not showing some it's not bouncing around excessively it's not stuck at some value so all that is normal then we move on to the taxi checklist radios are on we're not flying with ATC we're not flying with any traffic so we don't have to worry about the radios or transponder we don't have to worry about that either the altimeter is set the heading indicator is set landing gear indicator is green radio we check the weather the current weather is 100 degrees at 7 knots visibility 10 kilometers light rain in the vicinity Few clouds at 1500, broken at 2200, broken at 2700. The ceiling is 2200, okay. Temperature 5, dew point 4, and the altimeter is 1012. And we're going to depart runway 11 off to the east. Um, we've already released that and we tested the brakes. Now we go for the run up. Again, before we do the run up, we check the oil temperature. That is fine. So we hold the brakes. We have the parking brake set, you know, so that works too. So we check fuel quantity. Fuel gauges are fine. Fuel tank selectors again we still on the dip tanks. The mixture we're gonna put the mixture to full rich for the run up. And then we set the throttle to two thousand RPM. I forgot to mention that uh, the reason why we point the aircraft into the wind is because obviously the engine is air cooled so the wind blowing this way you get more air into the engine and therefore more cooling. Anyways we're at 2000 rpm and we're steady there. We check the oil temperature, the oil pressure is in the green, the ammeter is showing zero, the suction, gyro suction is good, we check the cylinder head temperature, the EGT all within limits. Then we check the magneto, so we note we're at 2000 RPM exactly, we check the left magneto. And we show about 90, 95, about 90 RPM drop. And we switch it back to both. A lot of, uh, uh, some people I, I notice it, they just switch it to left and then right and back to both, that's incorrect. Because if you switch it to the left one, and without going back to both, then um, you ris run the risk of fouling up the other magneto that wasn't operating at the time. So now we ch so you usually uh, check, turn it back to both to clear the magneto that wasn't operating. So if we check the left one, we switch back to both to clear the right magneto of any possible fuel deposits. So we go back and we check the right one. Again, the RPM drop is about 90 to 100 ish. So the maximum uh, drop is 125, so we're within limits. And uh, importantly also, the difference between the two RPM drop is supposed to be a maximum of 50 RPM. So we have, I'd say maybe less than 10 RPM difference. So I'm going a check, we switch it back to both. Now this is, uh, we're in cold weather, we're supposed to cycle the props one to three times or more. Um, to circulate warm uh, oil through the uh, governor. So we'll do that. That's one. And it's important to do that also because if you don't and you may end up with um, metal, metal particles from somewhere, some mechanism in there into the engine oil and that could da obviously damage your pistons. Carb heat, we also check the carb heat. Shows an RPM drop. And also shows that we aren't experiencing any um, carburetor icing. Because if we were experiencing carburetor icing, then we'd get an RPM increase instead. So that is checked. So we bring the R the uh, RPM back down to a thousand, and we lean the mixture a bit. So we're gonna taxi now to the runway. Let's put away the checklist. We're 
clear on both sides. And let's see if we can get rolling here. Again with the rain, let's turn the knob lights on because we are IFR. Alright, so I'm gonna go ahead and taxi to the runway. I'll uh, see you guys for you guys for the before takeoff checklist. <laughs> 